Here we go. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to get into tonight's study. Um, have open in prayer. Um, I was going to do an icebreaker. I don't know if I'm do it now. Kind of want to get get into this. Uh, we're going to read our text. Um, we're going to break it up into two sections. The first section is the incident, and you'll understand what that means when we get into the passage. Uh, the second section is justification by faith. Um, both sections will have discussion questions, then we'll have final thoughts, announcements, and closing prayer. Um, would anyone like to open us up in prayer? Uh, your tithe volunteer? Is that what you said? Uh, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we just come before you this evening thankful for the opportunity to come together and learn more about yes. you, yes. to fellowship with one another. And so, Father God, we ask that you would uh, have your hand upon the teacher tonight, mm -hmm. Lord, that the Holy Spirit would bring us revelation, illumination, and enlightenment in your word, that he would be the teacher. Lord, we ask mm -hmm. that you would just allow us to grow and to change um, in your word tonight. Strengthen us, Lord, that we might have patience and energy to get through the hour and a half, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And Michelle, Michelle, we pray for healing yes. for Amen. Michelle and a quick recovery. Amen. 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 So let it be. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, right for real. <laughs> All right, let's get to um, maybe just do one. Would anyone like to read our passage? It's only a what is it? Ten verses. Let's break it up five and five. So somebody read um, eleven through sixteen, and then somebody pick it up seventeen through twenty-one. Who's got it? I could read one half. All right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's 11 through 16, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. And the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, if you, <clears throat> being a Jew, live in the matter of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Okay, who's picking up 17 through 21? But if we, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found sinners. Is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Let's get into this. Let's have some fun. All right. Who was Paul laying the blame on? He, he, it sounded like he was. Who was Paul laying the blame on? <laughs> hands, 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 hands. 
Tierra. I'm pretty sure I heard Willie read Peter. Peter? Did everybody say yes to Peter? Yep. All right. Uh, so why is Paul laying the blame on Peter? Why is Paul laying the blame on Peter? Why Peter? Why not the others? Why not the certain men that came down? Why not James or Barnabas? Why Peter? Hmm. While you're thinking, oh, go ahead, Aaron. So because, uh, you know, Peter was a leader and, uh, you know, pretty much as, as a teacher and leader, you know, the, you know, the, the church, you know, follows him, <laughs> you know, because he, he's like the, the, uh, the, the semi-authority, I should say. Right, right, right. <clears throat> uh, Taya? Because he was, he, he was eating with the Gentiles, and then when they, the people from James came, he stopped and acted different. So he was being funny, mm -hmm. some funny business he was doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, Nikki? Um, <clears throat> I might need a little refresher, but I'm not sure what is um, Paul blaming Peter for. I, I don't remember. Well, that's, that's what we answered. That's what we're trying to figure out. Why is Paul laying the blame on Peter? Why, why Peter? Why isn't it, you know, somebody else? I no, mean, what is he blaming him for? Mm -hmm. That's well, I guess that's what we're trying to figure out. Okay. Is what is what is he blaming him for, Miss um, Edie? Um. I th he's blaming him because Peter, um, when he was, when he first was, you know, eating and stuff with the Gentiles, he didn't have a problem. But when other Christians started coming around and um, um, be seeing him, then he turned from doing that. And so he, it was almost like he didn't want to be embarrassed or something. And I think that Paul was mad at him for that because not only was it affecting um, the other Jews and Gentiles, but it was starting to affect Barnabas. It is starting to affect Barnabas. Okay, okay. It's kind of, it's kind of, kind of there. Tierra, you want to add something to that? Uh, that's basically what I was going to say, is that he's basically calling Peter out for being a hypocrite, one, um, for being kind of scaredy, too, because it says that he was worried that the, like, circumcised, circumcision crew was going to, like, badmouth him, so he was being scaredy about that. But then also he's contributing to the division, right, because, like, so far we've been talking about how there were these other gospels um like we talked about like the circumcision and the emphasis on all of that that was going around in the galatian church and people were on board with that and so peter was kind of allowing that to continue because he like didn't want to i guess go against that circumcision party okay Aaron, what do you what do you have to add to it? You know, no, I agree. Um, you know, when you know when Peter, you know, prior to the, the this group, you know, coming, you know, Peter was pretty much eating with the you know the Gentiles. Um, you know, as as Paul says, you know, living as as the Gentiles in the sense you know do. And then when this group came in, you know, he pulls you know back, you know, because uh. You know, in the book of Acts, he talks about, you know, how unlawful it is, you know, for a Jew, you know, to associate with a Gentile, you know, so it, it's almost as if, you know, now he's, you know, kind of co-signing with this, you know, the, the, the Jewish, you know, mindset of, you know, if you're eating with the, with the Gentile, then you're, you're pretty much are unclean, you know, where, 
you know, but beforehand, before you know this group came, you know, he you know he was fine with it. So in in a sense, you know, he's co-signing with this false doctor by doing that. Okay, okay. I think um, I think everybody's answer is is right on. Um, after Nikki, I will add some background to this. Go ahead, Nikki. Um, I, I'm just trying to understand, but it, it looks like to me that like he was kind of um, almost like Peter was okay with them returning to the law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that kind of yeah. okay? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure I understand. Um, in Acts chapter 11, verses <laughs> 1 through 18, and I don't know if we, well, I don't want to read the whole thing, but so I'll basically summarize it and we'll read Acts chapter 15, verse 6 through 11. So we're going to read that. So go there. Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. <clears throat> Peter returns to um, Jerusalem after ministering to the family of Cornelius, who were Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit falls upon them. And Peter explains to those at Jerusalem that the Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles just as he did the Jews. And God had granted to them the same gift that they received on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And so Paul realizes that not only is Peter kind of being intimidated by these that are coming from Jerusalem, but Peter knew better. Mm. Peter knew that God had blessed the Gentiles with the spirit of God. Mm. He knew this. He was there. Mm -hmm. and, and for you to be there mm. and to act like that didn't happen, I think is really, mm. you know, egregious because if you didn't experience that, then you it might make sense, you right. being a Jew, right. that you kind of fall in with the rest of the Jews. Okay. But Peter, you don't have an excuse. <clears throat> you have an entire testimony mm -hmm. of God speaking to you through a dream, mm -hmm. men being sent to your house, you going and ministering to people, the Holy Spirit falling upon them, and then receiving mm -hmm. the gift of the Holy Spirit and repentance. Mm -hmm. And you're going to sit here and act like that didn't happen? Wow. Right. Wow. Wow. That is an issue. <laughs> that, is, that definitely is an issue. Could you imagine that? That you and somebody else, you know, went and experienced something. Y'all go somewhere and you're trying to explain it. And the other person's acting like they weren't there. Like that didn't happen. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that would be kind of rough. Damn I would bro. feel, I would be a little salt. I would be very salt, <laughs> you know, uh, high blood pressure and all. Aaron Coleman. <laughs> yeah, and, and and the you know kind of top it off, you know, God gave him that revelation. God gave him the revelation. <laughs> gave it directly to him. It wasn't like somebody told him this. God gave him a direct revelation. And guess what the revelation had to do with? Eating. Jeez. <laughs> the revelation Whoa. was directly connected to eating. eating. That's scandalous. And God tells Peter, don't you dare call unclean what I call clean. So for him to act like that, Paul had to call him out. Yeah. So let's read Acts chapter 15, verses 6 to 11. Is everybody there? Anybody want to read it? Any volunteers? Yeah, I got it. Go ahead. Cool. <laughs> uh, you said verses what? 6 through 11, Acts 15, verses 6 through 11. Now the apostles, apostles and elders came together to consider, oh, 15, right? 15, yeah, 15, 6 through 11, yeah. Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, men and brethren, you know that a good while ago, God chose among us that by, by, that by my mouth, the Gentiles should, should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us, and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, now, therefore, why do you test God? Why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck 
of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the manner as they. Wow. Everybody say, Peter, come on, man. Come on, <laughs> come on man. How does he act like that, having that experience? How does he, how, how did he do that? And so, yeah, it is about returning to the law. It is about him acting shady, not eating with the Gentiles. But really, the backstory makes all of that even the more egregious Classic. because it's like, bro, you were there. The Classic. Holy Holy Spirit gave you a vision yeah. <laughs> that the, the Gentiles are supposed to be grafted in. You're supposed to, you should be more of a, a, a sounding alarm than Paul. Yeah. Like, yeah. hey, y'all, why y'all not eat with them, man? Did, don't y'all remember, you know, what man. the Lord showed me? That how he he gave the Gentiles the Holy Spirit and everything like us. So for Peter to act like that, yeah, wow, that was pretty rough. That definitely was rough. <laughs> okay, so let's take a deeper look at why Paul. Um, why is Paul so upset? And so I want to give a, another you know a little background. So let's get a couple of different people. Somebody get First Corinthians chapter ten. Verses 31 through 33. Somebody get 2 Corinthians chapter 6, um, verses, uh, verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3, sorry. And then someone get um, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. Hopefully you guys can see my screen so you can see these verses. All right. Who's got 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 through 33? Nikki. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 31 through 33 reads, Yes. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whether you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the prophet of many, that they may be saved. And so Paul's like, look, whether you're eating or drinking or not doing any of it, make sure you're doing things to the glory of God. Mm. Do not offend Jews or Greeks, but we want all men to be saved. And so Paul is looking at Peter like, bro, are you willing to offend these people wow. in order to jeopardize their salvation? Mm. is that is that what you're telling me wow that you're going to act like that <laughs> who's got second corinthians uh chapter six and verse three i got it mm -hmm. we give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed and that's simply his thought you know and he goes on, he gives a list of things, you know, that, yeah. you know, he, he, okay. he, that he does so that the, the ministry is not held in, held accountable for any offense. And so he's looking at Peter like, look, I've worked hard to not give an offense to people, get, not give them a reason to reject Christ because the message is already hard, right? It's already difficult. Right. Why would I, why would I add insult to injury insult to injury <laughs> why would i add more on top of that wow. let's read this last one second corinthians chapter 11 uh verse 28 and 29 go ahead Tia. and apart from other things there is a daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches hmm. who is weak and i am not weak who is made to fall and i am not indignant man he's like look there is an anxiety on me Ooh. When it comes down to the churches, this, this dude's passion for the churches, you know, that's why I named this subtitle, this, the passion of Paul, you know, a just cause this dude, he's really, really passionate about people being saved. And so for Peter to act that way was really a problem for Paul because he look at how difficult it is for them to even hear this message. And we want them to grapple with it and try to understand it, you know, and this is a little off script, 
But have you ever felt like Paul feels when you hear some type of false doctrine or mm. you see somebody mm. acting a little shady? You mm. know, have you has anybody ever felt like that? Mm. Get, uh, you know, give, give me a quick, a quick testimony. Mm. You don't have to say nobody's names or nothing. Just, you know, a, a situation where you felt like that. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I remember like visiting other churches. <laughs> you know, and instead of you know preaching, you know, uh, the gospel and, and and growth, you know, through the Spirit of God, you know that. It's all about, you know, you don't do this. No, you, you don't do that. You know, you're going to hell, <laughs> you know, and, and just like, it just cringes. You, you know, it's like my heart just cringes. It's like, right. oh man, it's like, you, you know, really, it, it's really kind of going back to the law. Yeah. Anybody else have a quick example? Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Willie. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, there in similar to, to Aaron, you know, there are many times where I go inside the church building and nobody greets mm. there. There's like I just feel like I'm the sore thumb that sticks out. You know, everybody's just looking at me and like they'll be talking in the middle of the group and they'll just kind of turn around like, oh, <laughs> that, that guy, whatever. And they just keep on. But the minute the service comes on, now everybody's excited. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> the music and then the worship. I'm like, wow, this is great. And then it, it's weird. Like there's like a snap moment after everything's done. It's like, <laughs> okay, back to regular schedule. Program. <laughs> you know, I don't, you know, like it, it, it's weird. Like I just saw that to be, for lack of a better word, fake. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, I'm trying to connect with the people and I don't know how this church thing works. Right. <laughs> You know, so yeah, 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 definitely had a lot of experiences. Anybody else? One more, and then we gotta move. No. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Well, I pray that God gives y'all some, <laughs> some, <laughs> some examples. All right, so. How did Barnabas get carried away in the hypocrisy of the Jews? How 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 did Barnabas and and just to kind of give you a couple little definitions here, um, hypocrisy, and I listed all three of the, the the words for hypocrisy because when you put them all together, it's this idea of um, under deceit playing a role acting or pretending and so um how did barnabas get caught up in this now barnabas spent plenty of time in antioch um <clears throat> with the gentiles how did how did i mean it's almost like you know peter's hypocrisy really did rub off on barnabas like barnabas you were there you you were the one that they sent to Antioch. That's the to encourage the people. Damn. You grabbed Paul from Tarsus to go there and brought him over to Antioch. Antioch. And the Christians were were then the and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. And y'all were there for at least a year. Bro. How does Bar how does Barnabas get caught up in this? How did he get carried away? And and basically it doesn't tell us uh, specifically. So I'm kind of asking you to kind of read into it. And how could this happen to Barnabas? The encourager. This is the guy whose Man. name means encouragement. Right. Go ahead, Willie. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, again, it doesn't really tell us, but I can imagine because I know I've been guilty. So I'll just say people pleasing. Mm. I'll definitely say people pleasing. Mm. You see, <laughs> yeah, you, you see Peter. He's all like, nah, they're, they're still unclean. <laughs> And then they move off. And then you have this like weird pressure in the midst of this social setting. And you're all like, well, I could either do what I know what I'm supposed to do and still fellowship with them. Or I could just follow Peter's lead because I don't want to look out of place. So I definitely believe there is definitely some people pleasing in that specific part, which is just ridiculous. You're <laughs> just like, I, I never thought I'd see. I never put that together. 
Barnabas. Yeah. Like he was the one that took Paul <laughs> under his wing. I mean, they they went know? out and preached. Oh, go ahead. I'm yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just I'll stop and leave it there. Uh Nikki and then Raquel. <laughs> Um, oh, so similar to what uh, Willie's saying, so, you know, just kind of fear of um, not fitting in, not yeah. saying the right stuff, it's just like modern day, you know, a lot of times people have gotten in a whole bunch of trouble, not because it's what they wanted to do, but they didn't want to stick out, uh, um, just like even if you think about um, the disciples, when they asked them, did they know Jesus? Right, <laughs> right, Man. right. You yeah. know, just because of that fear, they was like, Mm-mm. you know, so... <laughs> my take <laughs> uh raquel you had your hand up or did you still want to make a comment i i don't know <clears throat> i'm guilty maybe even not living living a double life you know wanting to live one way in your privacy but being held accountable because you know what's right you know you know you're doing wrong but you know one foot in one foot out you know i i know what to do right but I still choose. And just kind of fall into it like yeah. ah. <laughs> amen. Real. amen. That's real. I'm I I think if that's just be being transparent, you know, it's not that I don't want to, and it could be peer pressure. You know, I don't want to be judged, or mm. like Nikki said, I don't want to stick out at home, you know. So I do as they say, what the Romans do when I'm in Rome. Right, right. Wow. I live another lifestyle wow. at church and it's a war within. You're like, Lord, I need help. Renew my mind, renew my heart. But when I go back home, you know, and especially really at home, because your family's like, oh, you can't have a, a drink with us. You can't have <laughs> a glass of wine. Oh, don't, don't, don't do that. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, the Robinsons. Uh, just you know, definitely the people pleasing was a part of it for sure, you know. But it could have also been Barnabas wasn't fully persuaded. Like you know, we, you know, we look at things all the time, right? We'll say Amen. Things will have a mental understanding of something, but not um, be fully persuaded by it. So obviously, you know, I don't say obviously because we we all know, like you said, we have to kind of you know, for lack of better words, kind of not reading between texts a little bit. I think he wasn't persuaded that, you know, that, yeah, the Gentiles received the gospel fully and that they didn't need to be circumcised. And along with that pressure, you know, your, your, you know, your persuasion gets less and less. So I think it's all that stuff. Yeah. Cause when you think about it at the end of Acts chapter 15, <clears throat> uh, Paul and Barnabas go their separate ways. Wow. They have some type of dispute over John Mark, and we don't know what it was about. You know, we just assume it was John Mark, but we don't know. I mean, Barnabas, maybe this acting like this. Paul was like, "Look, bro, don't do that. You either with me, or you against, or you, me. <laughs> you know, because Paul seemed kind of, I mean, hardcore. He really, really was serious about this thing." Mm. Um, Aaron Coleman. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, I, I think that's kind of one of the the, uh, the the personality differences, uh, or I should say the the personality the part of Paul that kind of stands out is that Paul was never afraid, you know, of, of man. I never scared. <laughs> you know, ne never scared. <laughs> you know, now I, I can see, you know, in Barnabas, you know, not having that. That bold personality, you know, it's like I, I don't care who's feeling on my hurt. I'm gonna speak the truth. You know, if your leaders are are doing this, you know, if you, see, you know, Peter, you know, the 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 apostle, you know, is is doing this thing. You know, he's 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 kind of, you know, turning foot, you know, so to speak. So it's like, okay, well, you know, like everyone's saying, it's like I don't want to stand out. <laughs> you know, I don't want to stand out. So I'm, I'm gonna follow suit. You know, I'm, I'm gonna do what you know that you know, my leaders are, are doing. You know, but Paul, on the other hand, you know, he, it's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna call, you know, the, these people out. I'm gonna call Peter out. Not, not so much think about, you know, I'm, I'm trying to call him out, but he's thinking about the, 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 the gospel sake for the gospel right. sake. You know, if people are going to be swayed to a different gospel as a result of this action, hmm. you know, 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry for, your, for your feelings, but <laughs> I'm going to preach the truth because I'm more afraid of God, you know, mm -hmm. than man. You know, so I, I can see Barnabas, you know, believing it, but being afraid to kind of stand out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bar and, and I like what you said about Barnabas, you know, saying, well, look, Peter, he's not sold on this. Mm. I could imagine that Barnabas probably the whole time was like, hey, Paul, don't 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 be so aggressive with this. Barnabas, because Barnabas is an encourager. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. hey, you know, let's right, let's right. Let's not be so yeah, harsh. Yeah, yeah. Let's, Paul, you don't have to go so yeah, so yeah. strong. You yeah, you yeah, can, yeah. <laughs> you know, almost like pulling his coattails a little bit. Like, hey, Paul, tone it down, bro. Tone it down just a little bit. I relate man. to. I relate to. You Barnabas know, so, <laughs> you know what so I'm saying. Much on that. Yeah, I just could imagine him yeah. being that way. That yeah, probably really one because, one like you said, he may not be fully because he was a. He was a Levite, you know, he got, he's wow. got, he's got Israelite roots, wow. right? So wow. this is not something to give up so easily, Man. even though Paul, so Paul had a revelation, mm. right? Barnabas didn't have the revelation. Okay. That, that's a, that's a good, good note. <laughs> Paul had a, he had a road to Damascus yeah. situation where he's, yeah. th th this whole thing is like, Man, I gotta preach this thing. Okay, may I jump in real quick? Go ahead. Real, 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 real quick. <laughs> I think another part too to think about it is that, like you said, he's a Levite. He did not only did he not have the revelation, but also he's still stuck in his roots. Yeah. Like Jewish culture, they did not affiliate, associate, talk, no dealings with the Gentiles. You know, so I really do believe that is a huge part why he was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, man, but wasn't fully persuaded yeah yeah i just yeah, yeah amen 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 let's move forward yeah. so cool. all right so this is kind of a really thinking question i really want y'all to kind of dive in you may not be able to answer it right away so i'm gonna give you time would you consider the apostle paul's strict faith alone belief and dogmatic defense of the gospel, A, legalistic, B, religious, C, judgmental, or D, all of the above? Oh. You see it? Mm -hmm. you see it? I'm looking. Oh, the Robinsons, brave soul. Uh, I'll be brave. Now, Pastor, you know Paul's legalistic. It's like, no. Um, let's see. Uh, would you consider Paul strict, faithful, and belief in dominant defense of the gospel? Be religious. Definitely be. <laughs> and why do you say that? Why do you say that? <laughs> uh, I have to go to James, and I probably should remember James' the scripture. Um, but Paul was really doing what God's revelation was for the people of God. Like we got Acts, um, where he's literally giving the revelation. So he's only doing what God's taught him to do, which is the gospel, which was in the scheme or bigger plan mm -hmm. that we talked about previous chapters, I believe, um, when we're going and tracing it back to Jesus. And when he gives the Great Commission and the kingdom of God so much more, right? We're talking about this whole Galatians. So it leads him to be religious because it can't be legalistic um, because he went, well, I hope I'll focus on this chapter. He went talk about freedom hmm. if it was legalistic to our standard view, trying to not play words here. It's not judgmental because you just talked about Paul just having the compassion for the church. So if he's compassionate and compassionate for the believers of, of, Galatia, he can't be judgmental. And mm. so I don't know. That's just the reasoning behind it. Okay. Somebody else? Anybody else? <laughs> the Coleman's or Aaron Coleman. <laughs> yeah, the, that's a hard one because I well, yeah, it's purposely to, to, be, to be honest. <laughs> I, I don't I don't think it's judgmental, but 
I don't know how how we're defining legalistic and religious, but even if I were if I, if I were to say, um, I would say a legalistic in a sense of, uh, and I guess how I'm defining it is not legalistic towards, um, you know, the the law as much as it's it's a legal. It it really um, the strict faith alone belief is it okay how can I say this it fits the legal requirements of God so even though and, and actually really of, of the law as well because because Christ legally fulfilled the law right and he also legally you know fulfills the requirement the God, you know, God standard, you know, for righteousness, and that's really the legalistic. Legally, that's really the only requirement that fulfills that. So the strict faith alone is is the only requirement that fulfills God's righteousness. You know, so if I were to be legalistic about it, that that really fits it. It um, it it it, it accomplishes God's legal requirements. You know, if I were to define it like that, so. I mean, that, that, that's hard. That's a hard question. That, that's the only way I, I can really define it or okay. answer it. Okay. Uh, Ms. Raquel? Um, in the famous words of Willie, I'm going to struggle out loud. Okay. I think it would be D, all of the above, because I think there is an accountability to each one in the sense of there is um a religious perspective and but i guess the one that's con confusing me is the judgmental because when i hear judgmental i think it's a standard it's a standard um to way we look at our beliefs so i'm gonna say all of the above okay anybody else want to chime in Nobody else want to throw their hat in the ring, Ty? You throwing your hat in the ring? I'll go, I'll go afterwards. <laughs> I'll go. Actually, actually, Raquel, I, I can buy that. <laughs> I'm going to throw my hat in the ring, and I'm going to agree with uh, Anthony and say religious. And I'm going to say religious uh, because he is arguing against the law, which that would be legalistic to me. Um, he's not making a judgment of one is better than the other. So I don't think it to be judgmental, but I, I say religious because he is ministering to the Gentile, spreading the gospel based upon the assignment that Christ has given him um, and said to him. And so to me, that's that's religious in, in that regard. And so that is the only one I can think of. Okay. Willie? Yep. And then we'll come back to Raquel. Yep. And I second and third, Mrs. Ty and um, Pastor TC, I say religious. Because religious is two things. True religion mm -hmm. is two things. It's pure and it's undefiled. Mm. So Paul had a revelation, right? Mm -hmm. So out of his revelation, that means his motivation and his inspiration was pure. Mm -hmm. so it was pure and it was undefiled it couldn't have been judgmental because when i see when i perceive judgmental it's going off of your own bias mm -hmm. this wasn't something that he got from himself and he made that clear in the beginning he said not through man mm -hmm. but it was from god okay and it couldn't have been legalistic because he's actually debunking everything in this whole passage and moving forward mm -hmm. about the law Right. And how you're not justified by the law, you're justified by faith. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say religious and scam. Mm -hmm. mm. Raquel, did you want to add something? And then we'll move. No, I just have a question of the interpretation of dogmatic. When you're being dogmatic about something, you're it's, it, it it seems to be borderline judgmental. That passionate is there, like this is the standard. Is that, can you just tell me the understanding of dogmatic? So, so, 
so all the terms that I use were purposely put there to create this 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 struggle that you're having. <laughs> I, I actually did that purposely um, because I wanted you to kind of have to, you know, really dig deep. Um, so when we talk about dogma or being dogmatic, dogma is a principle or set of principles laid down by an authority as incontrovertibly, incontrovertibly true. That's why I use the term dogma. He was dogmatic about the gospel. He believed that there was no challenge, that this is true no matter what. And a person who's dogmatic can seem judgmental and harsh because I almost put harsh on there, but I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to use that word. Mm -hmm. So I use words that I feel like we kick around in church, mm -hmm. right? Legalistic, religious, judgmental. I use the term dogma just to really poke at you a little yeah. bit, you know, really get you, you know, <laughs> think. But, but when you, when you read it and he's talking to the Gentiles, you're, he's not, so I guess I'm even confused in the deliverance of what he's saying, or is this just how you want us to look at it in the question? I guess that's what's No, th no, he's, 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 he has been dogmatic about the gospel from chapter one all the way up he actually told them that there's no other gospel if me yeah. or an angel comes and tries to preach another one let them be a curse okay that that that's some strong that's language. some strong language and then we come into this section well at, let's just think about the section before this where he says there are people sneaking in here hmm. uh, a fake brethren spies coming in i mean he's really really strict and dogmatic about his approach to this mm -hmm. and so legalistic and i think people have talked about it we talk about legalistic this word um in the theological sense means adherence to a moral law rather than a personal religious faith moral. so you're just you're just going off of a moral set of law not basing it off of your personal religious faith. Number two, religious. 2357 in your strongs, it means fearing and worshiping God. Hmm. Hmm. Literally fe uh, fearing and worshiping God. When we're talking about judgmental, we're talking about prone to make judgments, to prone to make judgments. So you're, you're making judgments against people. That's what judgmental, uh, that's what we're meaning by judgmental. And so if there is one that fits it, it is religious. And the reason why I pointed that out is because um, in our Christian culture, we have redefined all these words to fit whatever we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. we, re we define legalistic as anybody who's strict about anything. If you're strict about something, you're legalistic, right? But that's not what, you know, this is really legalistic is really specific to adherence to moral law rather than personal religious faith, mm -hmm. not just a person who is strict about something because mm -hmm. Paul is very strict about oh. faith in Christ alone. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. He does not right. budge on that at all. He's going to war with these people. So he's very strict about that, but he's not legalistic. His passion for this is because he fears and worships God. He is devout. He would be considered a devout Christian. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, not necessarily judgmental. So yes, uh, it, it was, it was an exercise to kind of stretch your thinking and, and, and kind of push you a little like bit. Christian. <laughs> I mean, I've thought of him like it's any Paul. any other questions about that before we move forward? <laughs> Comments on that? Yeah, good point. I'm I'm never really... You put two and two together. You're right. I haven't hmm? thought about that either. I was saying say? I've never really thought about Paul as a devout Christian. I mean, you you use that term in that way. I've never pictured him like this as a devout Christian, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've just pictured him as 
the Apostle Paul. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. that, that he's just sharing the, sharing the gospel. I've never really it's pictured really him true. in devout Christian. I think that term devout Christian takes a different look for me because that would coincide with the dog, dogmatic approach that he has. Because in all actuality, we should all be devout Come Christians like that. Yeah. Right? We should yeah. all have that. No, I'm not budging from this. I'm not moving from this. And it, it makes me look at it differently because for the longest, I didn't even like to use the term religious in divine, def, defining my, my, my relationship with Christ, right? But when I look at it like, okay, he's a devout Christian. He was dogma. He was religious. It, I, I, I hate to say it this way, but makes me kind of proud to be like okay i could be like that too right not in an arrogant not way. in an arrogant right. way but like okay i am that yeah call me that right say that because yeah. i'm doing just as much as he do yeah call me that because paul probably <laughs> paul probably would say that too he probably would say yeah i don't care he's <laughs> call me that <laughs> yeah we, we softened the blow right <laughs> oh i'm not religious just, that's just the like, apostle right there yeah okay sure. we'll go into the second section for our last <laughs> 30 minutes or so um what is meant by works of the law and so we had this whole discussion about paul and is he legalistic? Is he religious? Is he judge, judgmental? What is meant by works of the law? And so I uh, put up here a couple of definitions. Um, the law is 3551. And in this specific context of Galatians, because I couldn't find it in this very verse, but in the book of Galatians, it is used as the Mosaic code um, is what they mean by law. So what do you think is meant by works of the law? Oh. Anyone? Tim Mays. Oh, how you doing, Tim? Hey, yeah, good, good. Wow, good discussions. <laughs> but uh, when I hear works of the law, I, I think about relying on my ability to follow the law as a, a means of spiritual, mm, mm. Uh, what, what's the word, spiritual uh, growth and enlightenment or even salvation. My, yeah. But depending on my ability to follow, that's what I get out of the works of the law. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. Anybody else want to add something to that? That, that was good. Any other nuances to be added? Um, just, just something just to add on to that, because I think that's an exact answer. When you're looking at the verses, the, the works of the law are any attempts to be justified by um, following the law. Um, Paul is very adamant in this section about no, no person can be justified. No person can be declared righteous mm -hmm. um, by the works of the law. Only by faith in Jesus Christ. You know, even, even uh, he said, even we have believed in Christ um, that we might be justified by faith, not by works of the law, for by works of the law, no flesh will be justified. And so he's adamant, he's dogmatic <laughs> he, about this. He's like, there is, this is incontrovertible. You know, there's no way around this. I, I argue you to the, to the bone, you know, and later on he even talks about how if, if, if you could be justified by, if you could have righteousness by the law, then Christ died for no reason. That's how, you know, confident he is with this statement so based upon that paul makes this uh interesting statement in verse what is this verse 18 
For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Now, this is interesting. So I gave you all multiple choice. What did Paul destroy that he was unwilling to build again? And so A, his life under the law, B, the temple in Jerusalem, C, his friendship with the Pharisees, or D, none of the above. Tierra, you got this one. Yeah, I got this one fast, yo. Uh, A, uh, his life under the law. His life under the law. Because that's what he did, right? He, what is he, he knew it all, right? He was a faithful to the law every part of the law but when he turned gave his life to christ that was over he tore that down he destroyed it walked away from it without mm. hesitation nice 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 and so um just a kind of a follow-up question what are the things that you what is something that you had to tear down in your life to follow Christ, that you're unwilling to build again? What is something that you tore down to follow Christ that you're unwilling to build up again? Aaron. My own pursuit of happiness. Mm. Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big one. It's a big one. Anybody else? That's a good answer, Aaron. <laughs> yes, that was a good answer. Anybody else? What's something that you tore down? Something that my you... marriage and my family. I tore that down. And I say that. Your previous. My previous. Because I didn't rebuild it. Right. He made it. I didn't rebuild it. Tierra. I was about to say, Mom, you tore us down. Dang. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for me, I I'm would say. My, <laughs> <laughs> I would say um, just my vision for my life. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like I decided it was his life you know kind of along the lines of what oh, Aaron was saying but right. you know just the way that I want it to go that I think it should go I mm -hmm. tore that down in favor of what he wanted and can't build it back up <laughs> yeah yeah because it's tempting right it's tempting that okay I'm in Christ I'm doing good <laughs> let me rebuild some stuff that I didn't get right that I was trying to have that I was right Wow. Everything that the devil stole, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas Paul's like, Come look, now. <laughs> Paul's like, look, if I build again those things that I tore down, I make myself a transgressor. Right. And so what is he saying? That if I if I make my life based upon being under the law, then I am in sin. Well, I'm gonna right. just say ouch right there. Mm. <laughs> I am in mm. sin. Ouch. I actually make myself <laughs> a sinner because Man. that's what the law does. Oh, geez. Yeah. We'll have to discuss that in morning <laughs> That's what yeah. the law does. Man. Right? Man. Lord say my expectation. Expectation. Daily. Mm. Has to be cast down. It has to daily be dealt with. Daily destroyed. Because mm -hmm. I wake up in the morning, it's like, all right, I'm either going to choose what I want to do, mm -hmm. or I'm going to accept the reality of God's truth that I belong to him and be content with that. Mm -hmm. Some days I wake up, I don't want to. Yeah. So, yeah. I feel you, really. Mm -hmm. But when I do, I realize, wow, why didn't I just submit to begin with? Right. <laughs> nice. Right. Right. Deacon Tim. Yeah, I just... Really want to share real time. Uh, I was on my way home on the bus and I got a phone call from an exchange student who was going to the college I graduated from. Mm. And she said, I, I'm, I'm just wanting to know, I see here you graduated with your degree in psychology and I want to know what have you done with your degree and with your life since then? Mm. <laughs> 
And I heard myself saying, I'm working with developmentally disabled people, which is true, but I was trying to dress it up and make it sound right, you know, right, right. You know, <laughs> and, 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 and here's God, right when I was saying that, the line got fuzzy. So she said, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> and I had to say, I work for Accessoride. And she said, really? And that opened up the door to this wonderful conversation that ended up with me praying with her. Mm. <laughs> so what I had to give up was that temptation to try to make myself sound like something. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but That's God good. is so good. God is so good. That's good. Yeah, that was good. Wow. That was really good. Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> because that is something that you have to tear down is yeah. your vision of yourself. Yeah. Your, the self that you want to make. Because the problem with a self-made man is that he made himself. Mm. 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 <laughs> you know, and we have crafted ourselves in our own image, right? And so we tear that down and we've got to be unwilling to build that again. Mm. Because if we build that again, then we do make ourselves a transgressor because outside of Christ, right, we're all in trouble. Amen. Okay. Let's see. So we're coming to the end. Um, this question is kind of based on the last few verses. Um, Let's read them. Um, 19, for I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Oh. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Okay? Why is the Apostle Paul unwilling to set aside the grace of God? Is it A, because he loves the favor of God? Is it B, because the law could not produce righteousness? Is it C? Because favor ain't fair. Oh, <laughs> there's no all of the book. Sierra. Y'all are a mess. I can't deal with y'all. <laughs> 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 <Okay. laughs> because uh, favor ain't fair. See. <laughs> No, there shouldn't be no all of the above. Right. <laughs> Why are you saying gay? Yeah. Um, I'm going to say the answer is B. Mm. Because the law could not produce righteousness. Because that's basically what he's saying. Is that when he says that the uh, Christ's death would be in vain, right? Because oh. Christ died because without his sacrifice, we couldn't be made righteous before God. So by saying that you know, it would make Christ's death in vain, he's recognizing that the law itself could not produce righteousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Preach now. Preach, preach now. Preach, preach teach. Yeah. Yes. Preach That's teach. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Y'all need a little less church, a little bit more street, okay? <laughs> 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 any, any anybody want to comment or add anything to that? I guess I will add because what's sticking out to me is it's I'm in support of what Tier says. Um, <laughs> uh. When, I, when I'm reading it, it says declared versus made. Mm -hmm. And those two words are sticking out to me, right? 
um, because we can't be remade. Mm -hmm. Only God can remake us because he made us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so to be made righteous, it requires an act of God. Mm -hmm. um, but declare means that you're speaking forth what someone else has already said in decree. And so even that in that sense can understand why that would be related to the law because it was God who decreed the law for them, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so then when they say, I am righteousness because I abide by his law, I, it, it just like clearly makes sense to me, right? That there's no way that you could be made righteous in the declaration of the law. Yeah. And so you really do need Christ to be made righteous. So I'm just concurring with what you're saying too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? So two words to that. I every now and then I get four point stamps. I want to I want to focus a little bit on Paul says I do not set aside the grace of God. <clears throat> if we focus on the word grace here. Mm. We're talking about God's supernatural, his divine aid. Oh. That you could not be righteous without God's help. Man. Right? Could not be. Yes. That's what that's what Ty is saying. That's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, this life that I now live in the flesh, mm. I live it, <laughs> you know, in, in the faith or by the faith by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's how I'm living. And so I'm not living based upon my own strength. I live by faith in the son of God, right? I'm not living by my ability to adhere to the law. I'm living by faith in the son of God. And this is a picture of grace because it is by the grace because Jesus came right um, um, Moses came uh, to okay. the, uh, the law, law. Uh -huh. grace and, and, and grace, grace and truth came through Jesus. Yes, right. Yes, yes. So this <clears throat> grace and this faith are products of relationship with God through Christ. Yes. And so Paul is saying, man, if I could, if I could do it on my own, because he's saying basically by living by the law is really doing it on your own. Man. That I can check all the boxes. It's kind of like the young rich ruler. Y'all remember the story of the young rich ruler? He came to Jesus and he said, uh, uh, Sir, uh, Rabbi, mm -hmm. how can I have eternal life? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah. And he said, Okay, well, do you keep the did you keep the law? He said, Yes. Mm -hmm. I kept it since I was a, a youth. Yeah. I, I, I didn't lie. I didn't covet. I didn't, you know, uh, commit adultery. Mm -hmm. And I didn't hang out with people who do. No, it's kidding. I just add that in there. <laughs> he basically saying, I covered all my bases, right? Covered all my bases. And Jesus said, okay, great. The Bible says he loved this young man. And, 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 and he said, now all you got to do is take all of your goods, sell them, give the money to the poor, and then come with me. Come with me. The young man walked away sad because he had great possessions. Mm. And so even this man who followed the law and had money still was not justified outside of having faith in Jesus and following him. Mm. So some people are like, well, yeah, you know, you know, having money and being a good person, maybe that'll get me to heaven. He said it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> Final thoughts. Um, get a couple people. What did you learn tonight? What did you, what did you take away from this? What's your big takeaway? What's your big takeaway? Hmm. 
I learned the two step. <laughs> two step. The UTEP two step. The UTEP. Two step. Which, <laughs> the, the two step. Well, I didn't learn, but I'm being beat up over here. So what? Get get move forward. <laughs> She's like, I'm I don't so even know convicted. what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, come, come, come get your, uh, your, your sensei. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. He said, what's she talking about? She, 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 she says she got beat up and she's having a breakdown. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. <laughs> he said, oh, Lord, have mercy. Yeah. I, I don't even know what, I don't even know what she's talking about. How you get beat up? It wasn't even about you. Right. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't even about you. Nikki, go ahead and share while Ty gets herself together. <laughs> well, I learned that Paul is about that gospel life and he ain't changing for nobody. Nobody. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> nobody. He nobody. Nobody. Oh, about it. Wow. Yeah, he about it. He with it. And that's that's that. <laughs> And he will get in your face about it too. <laughs> <laughs> right. He, he, he's uh, what we call him a couple of weeks ago. He's zealous. He's zealous. <laughs> and passionate. Yeah. 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 Uh, anybody else wanna? What's 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 your big takeaway? Hmm. Okay, I'll go. Go ahead, Willie. <laughs> You abiding in the work. Okay, sorry. Sorry, Mrs. Ty. I'm going to tell you, sorry in advance. It's going to hurt. So just putting that out there. You abiding in the works of the law is building up in your transgressor because you're doing it all by yourself. And in the process of doing it all by yourself, you're not allowed. See, I told you it's going to hurt. You're not allowing the grace of God and humbling yourself. Ooh to be receptive to the grace of God, to be your aid and assistance in realizing you cannot do it by yourself. Right. And this is not just limited to the Jews. This is to all who believe in Christ. Right. So that that like that was the clear message. I told you, I, I told you that I'm gonna apologize in advance. <laughs> I told you it's gonna hurt. So <clears throat> anybody else? What, what's the big takeaway? Big takeaway. Tierra. This is not really a big takeaway. It's a side takeaway. Okay. And I feel like everybody who was in the singles class will get why this was significant to me. But I found out that Peter actually was kind of a punk. Like, <laughs> like. <laughs> oh, you your mama's child. Right. <laughs> no, because I'm thinking about it. Because technically it wasn't just this one time. Because right. technically, this is the same thing he did with Jesus, right? When mm -hmm. they was like, oh. are you not going to deny Jesus? Because it's the same thing, is that when people put a little bit of peer pressure on him, he was like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. So he just can't, <laughs> right. he, he can't handle no peer pressure, man. Mm. Wow. <laughs> wow. Jeez, that's real. Wow. They, they, they're breaking it down. That's interesting. You got some, some ghetto theologians up here. That's a ghetto. Some <laughs> thuggish theologians up here. The thuggish theologians. Hey, that's not like a dope name. Don't give me some right. ideas. I like that, right? Like thuggish theologians. The thuggish theologians. That sounds like a podcast channel right yeah. there. We've been, welcome to the Thug Theologian Bible Study. Right, <laughs> man. Right. Man. Right. Thug Anybody else? Anybody else got a takeaway? We'll just put it on there. Ain't no Aaron, Christians Robinson, in this class. Uh, Tim, Amber, man. anybody else got a takeaway? <laughs> Nikki? This is kind of, I just kind of came across this too, that because we said Barnabas was a Levite and Paul had revelation. So sometimes, you know, although you might be born into a family that goes to church or Christians, that you yourself have to have your own experience because wow. you see how Barnabas wow. when it got a little rough you know when everybody else was kind of leaning this way he leaned with him but yeah. because Paul had that that actual revelation he had the experience on the road to Damascus that he couldn't be moved 
She, she Y'all better preach. She, she, ain't, she, ain't, she ain't on no, no she on, on that word. <laughs> you you sound a little bout it, bout it. Man. <laughs> a little thug theologian. You make me some people in here about to be a little. I, I, I think the word harsh is nice compared to that. That that yeah, that that's that's good because that's so true. You know, the fact that Barnabas was a Levite of Cyprus, you know, and, you know, he's born into this. Paul, Paul was a Benjamin, Paul was a Benjaminite. Of Benjaminite, but Paul had a revelation. And when you have that revelation, it's hard to take that from you. Right. When, when you don't, when you don't really have that. Yeah. You do kind of waffle and lean and, mm. you know, cause Barnabas, <clears throat> You know, he said even he said even Barnabas was carried away with this hypocrisy. <laughs> oh, he was with, the, with this hypocrisy, even Barnabas. Like I felt like Paul was more was mad man. at Barnabas. Like Barnabas, you let them get you. Right, right. You my boy. You 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 my ride or die. <laughs> How you over here falling oh. for this hypocrisy? Oh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's like, don't look at it. Well, we, we got a couple more minutes if anybody right. else wants to share. Uh, then we'll do the uh, uh, announcements and close oh. out. <clears throat> Come on, Robinsons. I ain't, I ain't heard y'all's takeaway. <laughs> That's all right. Um, I'm just thinking and just trying to chew on everything. It was, it was good. Have you got anything? I thought it was good. Yeah, we don't have any takeaways. We just kind of, I'm just still chewing on everything. It was so good. Mm -hmm. Tim, you got anything? Amen. Hey, no, no, Mr. Tim is cut off after that last <laughs> comment. Uh, Why? <laughs> yeah, um, actually, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I'm processing, but. I want to really just lift up this young woman. Her name is Isabella, mm -hmm. and she's an exchange student from Brazil. Oh, really? She wow. was sharing how that it's in her heart to empower young women around her to uh, take leadership. And she wants to go back to Brazil and be in a position to encourage the young women around her to... Um, be entrepreneurs to get involved in businesses and 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 you know how the lord just takes over during a prayer ended up just praying for spiritual mothers and fathers while she's here and she just was weeping and just so thankful she said i, I really i thought i was just doing a student questionnaire but you <clears throat> you are actually uh doing something like she said i was really praying that someone would just be able to pray with me. And so her name's Isabella. And did you have any contact information? Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't. I uh, just, uh, I told her if you ever want to call back and let me know how things are going, please do. But um, it was just so, it was such a revelation. You're talking about revelation. The revelation for me was that when I put down all the pretenses and the the need to try to look like whatever. <laughs> and I just allow, it really opened the door for God to do what he wanted to do. And so, yeah, so just thank God for that. And that is kind of my takeaway, I guess, my takeaway. And I don't know if it blesses anyone else, but definitely blessed me. <laughs> so, amen. Pray for Isabella. Amen. amen. We thought we were on, unmuted. Yeah, sorry. Um, I don't know. Just, I just. I thought it was really it was good. A good lesson. Mm -hmm. I I love the questions, you know, and it and it shows us, like I think what Ty was saying that, you know, just because we're dedicated and passionate about the gospel and one sound doctrine doesn't make us, quote unquote, legalistic or religious. <laughs> <laughs> but it really does make us religious and it's okay that's actually okay yeah and i'm still just just thinking about everything and chewing on everything it was good good stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
well. Uh, make sure everybody is uh, ready for morning prayer, 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. If you haven't been on in a while, go to bed early. Jump on. <laughs> <laughs> jump, jump on. It ain't, it, it ain't going to hurt you. You enjoy it. Um, uh, we've got morning coffee tomorrow. Please join us. Um, Don't be going to no Burger King. <clears throat> <laughs> I, I think I think Ty is gonna go ahead and cook breakfast for us. <laughs> so I won't. Why wouldn't you I just didn't go say that instead of don't? I learned my lesson. You know, I gotta let her do it her way. Oh, don't come for me. Don't come for me. I gotta let her do it her way. Oh, come come me, her her way. <laughs> um, return back to sender. <laughs> but yeah, Ty, Ty's gonna cook breakfast. Come in the room now. <laughs> You cannot give the baby cereal. Uh -oh. Sit down. You're doing the most. <laughs> no, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear. You're not being nice. Okay. So, not being uh, nice. Uh, <laughs> um, we got Soba Men's 530 oh, yeah. on um, uh, Thursday. Come on out. I challenge the men to invite a friend. So you better start thinking about your friend that you're going to invite. Um, so we can multiply that group. Um, uh, Saturday, uh, we have rehearsal. This week, is we're going into first Sunday. So it's 18 and over. So all adults, you are welcome. Be in person. Don't be on Zoom. You're a grown up. <laughs> be in person. Be here. Now, out of state, folks, we can't do nothing about that. What's that but, about? you know, be here. Be in person. Um, we want to see your face. We want to hug on you. We want to love on you we want to talk to you and, and you can invite an adult friend you know to to be in person with us uh nikki what you got um really quick can i put in a prayer a, a song request for the praise team song she request she okay song request burdens down look she oh. kept saying that for three days <laughs> okay i i think we can fit that into the rotation <laughs> okay we'll put that you. in there she was saying that the other day she was like what is that song we can put that in there. We definitely put that in there. Um, amen. Um, any other announcements? Uh, women's, women's is on Zoom at 9 a.m. Saturday. Zoom. Yeah, Tier, that means eight for you. <laughs> oh, that's why I was doing the math in my head. Like, wait, that's not what time it That's too early for a Saturday. I won't be there. You <laughs> <laughs> Just don't, we don't need to see your face. Just be on. You need some coffee beans? Yeah, some espresso beans. Espresso. Espresso beans. If you chew on them, they give you energy. That's going to knock me out. <laughs> um, anybody want to pray us out? I guess I can pray us out. Amen.